Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marv or Mervageddon, depending on where you found me on the internet. Um, if you watched the other video, you know that right now I am going to uh, be giving you some tips and tricks on watercolor paint. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to um, show you the various ty types of watercolor paint that I have and then we're going to move forward and I'll give you some um, basic blending techniques and some things that you probably need as well as some things that you probably don't. So while I'm laying out some of my various types of watercolors, I just want to give you guys a um, kind of refresher on what we showed in the intro video. As a reminder, watercolors are easily reworkable. They're generally transparent and as a rule of thumb, most people uh, will say that watercolors require working from your lightest value to the darkest. Now, what I'm going to do first is lay out all of my various types. I'm going to explain to you the differences between the few. Um, then we're going to go through and talk about what we may need and what we may not, and then the various types of paper. And then I'll move forward and do show you guys some techniques. Here what I have is a scholastic version of pan watercolors. These are really nice for a beginner. That way you get all the colors and they're relatively cheap. Um, they do end up being quite chalky, um, but that's okay because the pigment is distributed differently. They come in this and they'll come with a uh, pan to mix in. I don't know if that's what it's for, but that's what I use. And it comes with a brush, but I lost it. Um, so next, what I what I use, which is my favorite, I use Gansai, which is a Japanese version of a pan watercolor. Now these are nice because they have very thick pigment and they're more opaque than an American watercolor in my opinion and most well than most of the ones that I've found um, they come in little pans like this and the difference between this and American watercolor is they will actually dry with a glossy finish rather than that dull matte finish I enjoy that personally so these are my favorite um, and they come with a little tin and they use a cam with like a little swatch card on top and a little mixing tray to mix your colors in but I use a glass palette for that now, this is a pan watercolor that I've made, technically. Um, I 3D printed the thing. There's a video for that, but you don't have to watch it. Um, these are my two watercolors that I've put down and um, put them in there so that I can travel with my watercolors and it's not as messy. I would say to pick out your, if you want these, to pick out your, um, your primary colors, a brown and maybe a black. Those, that's all you really need. Professional grade watercolors can get kind of expensive, so I would just start with those. And you should be able to mix anything you need from that if you pick the right, uh, the right hues of each color. And then I also have a water-based. I consider this a fluid watercolor. Um, this is actually an ink because I couldn't figure out where I put my uh, fluid watercolors for the video, so it's just a bottle of ink to have it here but yeah you use those like the pan watercolors and it's the same you know so you don't have to dilute it as much and then what I usually have is a various few various types of water receptacles you know uh, I pick one for mixing which is this one and then a clean one for just uh, diluting my stuff for, for clear washes and if you tend to use pan watercolors, you'll want a spray bottle to spray down your pans if you're extra like me. I, you know, I recommend you don't have to do that, but that's something that I do do. do. Um, it's something that I do for, uh, to, to make it easier to uh, get your supplies ready. Um, so here are a few types of paper that I enjoy. I like uh, this match Strathmore watercolor paper. It's very accessible. Um, and kind of cheap. I found it at Michael's. You can also find it at Walmart. And I also love this Fabriano watercolor paper. I buy it at my local art supply store. You don't necessarily have to get this. These are both cold press papers because I like cold press. Uh, the difference between cold press and hot press paper is that cold press has a texture where hot press is smooth. And then cold press paper also dries faster so if you're someone who's impatient like me you'll want to opt for a cold press paper rather than a hot press paper now if it takes you a long time to 
blend your paint or work through particular spots in your pieces I would suggest going with a hot press paper because it doesn't absorb the paint as fast uh, but here's a suggestion for a type of brush you'd like something with soft bristles and generally something that is rounded um, that way you get a ride for right a range a wide variety of uh, shapes and uh, points once this brush is wet so that you can cover a decent amount of uh, space with this particular brush because watercolor brushes can be kind of expensive now what I want to start off showing you guys how to do is uh, how to so a few ways to get a flat wash now if you're using a particular color I would lay down just some clean water and then add the particular wash of paint that you like a color that you like and then mix it around since your space is wet you can get a flat and even wash with um, just your uh, with just one color if you'd like to do that kind of thing and then you can move it around um, to get it to the consistency that you like oh see actually right now you can see because it wasn't showing up earlier you can kind of see the texture of the paper that I was talking about between this and the hot press paper um, you can see how it's kind of gritty looking that's coming from my paper because my paper has a tooth so you'd call it instead of uh, like it would show up on a smooth paper if this is helpful for anybody a hot press paper would look more like a bristol paper if that's um, it, would, it would it would behave more like that if that would be better for you to uh, for a for, uh, explanation now another way that you can get a good even wash is to load up your paper with just pure paint not as much water and it will give you a dark wash like this you wouldn't have to lay down um, any water first I'll show you a little later how you would be able to get a um, a wash using uh, paint little by little like the way that you cover a large area with a uh, alcohol based marker now right here what I'm doing is doing a gradient so what you're gonna do is get you a good deep saturated color lay down a bar you're gonna clean off your brush and you're gonna use just some of that clean water out of your other jar and um, you're gonna pull the pull the paint into the to just clear water you're just gonna spread it out until it's as thin as you'd like all right so yeah you're gonna use it and pull that water um, pull that water as far out and you can always go back over your saturated color and pull it further out um, as long as you want that gradient to go you should also be able to pick up some of the color with just clean water and a paper towel if you really wanted to do something like that now here I am just rounding off some of our edges so that it's done once it dries it look a little bit better but uh, this is generally what we'd want our gradient to look like so what I'm gonna do right now is go over our uh, initial technique but with a darker color to show that you can actually get the same depth of color with a um, with the technique like the first one that we showed um, but you should also be able to lift some of your colors like I'm showing here because our paint is still wet we can pick up some of that color and leave a highlight area if you're not as skilled with uh, removing I mean uh, with leaving area for your highlights or you forgot to leave your highlights you can always take a little bit of it up now as you can see it will leave a little bit of a residue um, you can see our our paper is a little green left over which is fine you could always go in with a gouache or a quote-unquote white watercolor and do something of that nature um, and take up some of those colors I mean sorry to create your highlights and add some white over it since gouache is opaque and you can also agitate an area and remove a color that's also been dried because remember that watercolor is also easily reworkable so all I did was take some clean water and agitate our area and take a paper towel and just pick up some of that color for again a little bit of highlight now if you guys are following along in your sketchbooks or with ooh, I don't know what I did um <laughs> if you're following along with your sketchbooks or with your um or just a note paper and pad this is an opportunity that we will have to try some of to mix some of our um um, some of our techniques together 
um, you will be able to right now. Um, I'm gonna lay down a bar of color, a thick saturated bar of color right here, like we did originally uh, when we did our first gradient. And I'm gonna pull it through with some clean water. Remember to clean your brush off and use your, your clear water from your other um, paint cup and drag that color out until it's as, uh, as, as transparent as possible, right down until it's clear, basically no paint left. And then what we're gonna do after that is take another color and go in the opposite direction and pull our color together so that we can mix those two colors together in opposing gradients. This is a good exercise for people who aren't quite as well versed with the layering um, and blending of colors together. You can always do this on your squat swatch card to see what it's like when you're um, when you are doing a piece or practicing or anything like that. So again, what I'm gonna do is lay down the thick saturated bar of color as thick as you like it, with as much paint as you need, and make sure it's good and saturated. We're gonna clean off our brush in our dirty paint cup, and then use some of that clean water and just pull that color up. Swipe, 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 and pull that color up just like that. Um, don't be afraid to add more water if you need or go back over your original pigments because you can always go back and add more paint. I would suggest starting light and then moving forward, but I knew exactly where I wanted to. Um, I wasn't really, I knew exactly where I wanted to go with the colors, so I wasn't really worried about um, having too much paint. And again, you can always add a little more water and make it a little more even and spread those colors out evenly. Once you've got it how you like it, you can go ahead and let it dry. And in just a second, I'll be showing you how. I'm, I'm just gonna, again, take up some of that color. Because it's mostly dry at this point, I'm just gonna take some clean water and agitate it. You're, as you remember, you pull some of that color up. Just put some clean water there and rub it. And take our paper towel and dab, dab. Once you dab away, it should come up cleanly. I just wanted to show y'all an example of hot pressed paper. Here it is, all nice and smooth. Um, this is one of my old sketchbooks. Well, not old sketchbooks, it's a mixed media sketchbook, but the paper is hot pressed, so this will give you more of an idea. That way you can see the texture um, between this and the other uh, sketchbook. Yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I've got my Gansai Tan B watercolors because um, these are my favorites, these are the one I like. So I've already sprayed down my paints because I wasn't quite sure which colors I was gonna use next. And I'm gonna mix up a good, a good wash that I'm comfortable with and a good amount of it at that because be aware of when you're painting that it's kind of hard to remix colors um, or get the same values of colors multiple times. It's possible, yeah, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of hard. Now, when you're doing stuff like this, remind yourself to leave space for your um, leave space for your highlights. Like I said, you can take up highlights here and there, but it's much much easier if you just leave space for them um, prior to uh, painting those spaces. So I'm just gonna flood these areas with paint, and I would suggest because I made this mistake. Um, to not use ink prior to. Now, I have another clip that I'll show you in a second that shows this example again, but um, when you lay down something that you thought was a little bit too dark and it's still wet, you can always go back in with your paper towel and remove some of that paint. Um, if you lightly tap without agitating the surface, it'll leave some, some, um, some paint behind and again just go through with the color that you like and just fill in the area now be mindful that if you use a color that you like and this is the the, the value that you like just let it dry no matter how much water you put on it now generally I like to use a color that's slightly darker than what I like and then I'll go through and dab it away I can always add more value I mean yeah more value to it you can always add more layers to it so it's not as big of a deal um, also, you can see here, if you don't pick a a pen that is water compatible, <laughs> um, like I did here, it'll uh, it'll run obviously. Um, 
So to combat that, you can sketch. You can do your sketch layer first, and um, you can remove you can remove the the ink prior to um, sketching everything out. I mean, remove the the graphite prior to uh, painting, and then you can just always once it's dry, add your line art afterwards. I tend to do line art first, but I just didn't realize this pen didn't work the way I had expected it to. <laughs> All right, and as you can see that I've done our filling in, you can see how some of these areas are vastly patchier than other ones. Um, a lot of that is because I waited too long when filling in the stuff. You can see where I did multiple layers. And you can also see where I didn't quite have enough water. Um, and so I'm just going to add some layering. Now, when you're adding layering, make sure that you wait between layers that they are dry. Otherwise, it'll look super patchy. Um, I'm gonna blend some of it out, but you definitely don't have to. You can make it like cell shaded, like you would with digital art, or um, try to make it as is uh, even as possible and even gradient if you'd like. It's all up to personal preference. The beauty of watercolor is the texture, actually. Um, you know just use the use use its properties to to your to your advantage I'm just gonna add a little details here and there and you'll see that our my details are running because obviously I didn't wait long enough to add this this was also a mistake I shouldn't add the black I could have just done it with a brush pen instead of watercolors because it made it real patchy and I didn't like the texture that it created actually once I um, tapped it away and so if you if you would have a problem with the texture that your paper towel creates, um, make sure you use like a cloth or a shop towel, something that doesn't have grit to it like a regular paper towel would. That's a tip that I have as well. Now in this next clip I'm gonna show you guys some of those um, some of the things you can do once you get a little bit more comfortable with your medium. Um, be aware that um, here, as you can see, just some old footage because the video flopped. I'll put it in the card, but you definitely don't have to watch it if you don't want to. Um, this video, I, as you can see, I'm not laying down a flat wash of, of uh, water before I do this. I'm just doing it little by little. Now, the first couple of layers are relatively patchy because I um, was unable to get the exact same color over and over again. I did not mix the amount of color that I wanted at the time. Um, or I mean the amount of watercolor paint that I needed at the time. So I'm just gonna go little by little and make sure I'm joining based on the parts of the, the paint that are wet still. This creates a more even wash as we talked about before, but now you can actually see what I was talking about. Um, I'm just gonna go through and erase a little bit here and there. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over it a couple more times with that same wash because remember your pigments are gonna compound because watercolor is partially transparent. And I'll go over it like two or three times before moving on to the next section because I just want to be completely in control of the amount of color that I give my uh, my piece. And so also you can do as many layers as you need, so don't be afraid to go back and add more color because you can always do that. But also be aware of the amount of motion that you're giving your paper. Um, some papers can't hold on to that. Um, a lot of them will start to pill up and all that. Like if you use too much, too much pressure, if you're moving your brush around too much, it will destroy your paper. So be careful of that when you're doing that. But as you can see what we were talking about before where I'm adding a darker color and I'm patting it away uh, while it's still wet. To take up some of the pigment that way i can control how dark my colors are getting um and you see you can add you can add as many layers as possible because it looks almost black here if i were to just let it dry it would turn into a dark like a very very dark color but you can you can remove some of that and give it a little bit of texture as you can see in the burlap sack up there at the top okay i hope you guys find these uh tips and tricks helpful i hope they're useful to you i will see you guys back next week for the next part i would love to see your art if you use my tips so tag me in it you can find me everywhere as marva Geddon. and i'll see you guys in the next one have fun creating bye